Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Muhammad Taha, and uh, first of all, apologies for the delay in sharing the link. Uh, and uh, so, uh, I welcome all of you. And uh, please, no one present the screen. Thank you. And uh, Rakshat, can we begin with the welcome? Ah, uh, okay. Okay. So, very good morning to one and all from Adit Chinchilgiri Institute of Technology, Department of Mechanical Engineering. Along with the team associated with the team Tech with Net, very happy to see uh, many students, faculty members, and other industrial persons who are gathered here. So let me not waste the time. So I welcome our beloved principal, Dr. C T Jayadeva sir. Welcome to you, sir, to the session. So now I welcome our beloved H O D, Dr. G M Satyanarayana sir. Welcome to you, sir. And behalf of the college department and Tech with Mac, we welcome Mr. S our today's speaker, Mr. Safdar Hussain, live from Abu Dhabi. Welcome to you, sir. And now I welcome some of the Mr. Mukin R. Karki, MD, Navin Engineering Services. Mr. Govind K. Handigal, CEO, Tadam Innovations. Mr. Dhananjaya, Associate General Manager, Wildcraft India Private Limited. Mr. Lakshmi Shah, Manipal Technology Limited. I welcome each and uh, all the industrial persons, and I welcome all the faculties of not only this college as well as there are other colleges who are participating in the session, and students who are the soul of this session. I welcome yeah. to one of you. So I ask now our beloved principal to. I'll speak few words on this session. Hello, Principal Sil. Please uh, unmute your mic. I sure you said you also. Please, thank you. Principal sir, are you there with us? Uh, he might be having some connectivity issues. HOD sir, uh, can you please uh, begin? Can you say a few words? Uh, English, okay, Karthik, uh, is it I'm audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning, all uh, Techwith Mac, uh, the team members. Uh, first, I will welcome uh, uh, today's speaker, the Sardar Hussain, head data uh, in uh, uh, data scientist uh, in uh, reputed uh, financial law. Uh, Is it time audible? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I welcome, sir. Once again, Asadha Hussain, behalf uh, of the department as well as all the faculty members of the department. I welcome yes, Mr. Navin also. I welcome uh, Mr. Govind. I welcome uh, Mr. Lakshmi Shah, uh, all uh, the industrial person uh, on this uh, webinar. Uh, once again, uh, I welcome all the my student friends to this webinar, Artificial Law Intelligence. Uh, please go ahead, Karthi. Uh, CT uh, Jayadev sir has joined us. Uh, mm -hmm. Please sir, if you have any words to say, you can go ahead. Uh, it, is it audible now? Hello. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, dear friends, it is my pleasure to meet uh, today's speaker, uh, Mr. Sabdar Hussain, and listen to his words on the topic artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence has already become an essential part of our life. Humans created artificial intelligence for us to imagine a healthy, secure, connected and creative future ahead. Especially for mechanical engineering, artificial intelligence plays a catalyst in the process of imagination. So therefore, in today's era, Education courses are helping us to create people 
who can bring the district of humans and machines closer. So I feel this can help to create new product systems and avenues in almost all the fields. So with these few words, I welcome once again today's speaker, Mr. Sardar Hussain. And uh, <laughs> we can continue. You please request him to continue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, so now, without further uh, delay, I would like to introduce today's speaker in very short words. So uh, he's Sabdar Hussain. He has done uh, BE in from uh, Computer Science Department in from uh, University of Mysore, and he has done Masters of Technology in Data Science from IIT Hyderabad, and uh, Masters in Management degree from University of Oxford, United Kingdom. He's also done executive PGP from IIM Ahmedabad. He's currently working as head of data science and artificial intelligence in one of the reputed financial industries. He has over 19 years of experience in data science, machine learning, advanced analytics, operational excellence, and PMO. He has presented several papers in the field of management. He has also been a keynote speaker at Machine Learning Summit, Smart Data Summit, World, Inter World Artificial Intelligence Conference, and IOTX. So there was a lot to be said about him, but uh, keeping it sweet and short, uh, now uh, I would ask uh, Mr. Sabdar Hussain to please continue with the webinar and uh, we can begin, sir. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. Uh, respected principal, respected uh, Dr. Satyanarayan sir, uh, respected industrialist, teachers, my fellow friends, and uh, all of you, a very good morning. Thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, it's a great privilege to be back and to be present. Uh, just in case, if you have any questions, you can always use chatbot and everything. Uh, I hope I'm audible to you, all of you guys. You can hear me? Yes, great. we can hear you, sir. Right. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Uh, it's it's absolutely a pleasure to be part of it. And uh, Chikmangalore is so close to me because I'll be giving you one minute of a personal introduction. Uh, my mother, my grandparents, everybody are from Aldur, a place in Chikmangalore. So uh, being a coffee planter, and this is such a great to be associated back to come back and try to hear for 20 years and see all my fellow friends from Chikmangalore. Uh, I used to see your college when I was passing through many times uh, uh, when I was going through. Uh, it is a great experience and love to be back and love to see all the fellow mates over here. So without wasting time, I'll just go ahead and start presenting my entire uh, presentation. Uh, so uh, let me go ahead. Can, can you see my screen, guys? Is it audible? Yes. Yes. So uh, I just wanted to quickly give you a creep kind of introduction. What is data science and what is artificial intelligence? Because quite often we jump and we have heard this word called AI quite often. And uh, uh, without understanding the meaning of AI itself or data science for that matter, uh, it becomes very difficult to understand what should be the perspective of a person itself and so on. Uh, nowadays, it has been extremely used, or in fact, I could say that it has been abused in several ways where every software is now being thought as an AI itself. So let me give a 15, 20 minutes introduction about what is AI? Uh, why did it start AI? And then I would like to give a two use case, a live demonstration of how we can implement an AI itself. A uh, little about myself, uh, you already has been uh, introduced by Mahmoud Taha about myself. And apart from that, I love writing and presenting some of the articles and everything and so on. Uh, one of the recent one was on uh, how to interpret uh, an AI in an artificial neural network was, was one of the recent research papers. Apart from that, I have posted some of my YouTube links and videos as well. Uh, so these are the few things I'll try to share the slides and presentation going forward as well, which will be helpful for you. So without starting, I just want to always start with a, uh, with a kind of a, a idiom that has been all very, very popular in this world. Uh, so I, I usually when I conduct such sessions, I usually keep it very, very interactive. I talk to people, I see them, I ask questions. So it's just like a two-way interaction I always do. Uh, so, but since it's a kind of a online, if I would like to keep it uh, uh, as interesting as possible so that people don't start seeing their mobile phones uh, soon after 15, 20 minutes of the session has been started. So there is a very popular uh, sentence said by uh, Edward Deming. It says that in God we trust, 
all others must bring data. You know, it says that in God we trust. All others must bring data. So it, it is a nice uh, idea by said by uh, Dr. Deming, uh, 1945, 48, he had said this. Uh, do you know what does it mean, guys? Any one of you can chat or anybody who has a view. It says that in God we trust. We believe in God, but all others must bring data. Uh, any inputs just or anybody wants to chat and say that anything or I can proceed. Uh, it says that simply when Deming started to work, there was a lot of discussions happening of how would you make a business decision? Okay? Suppose if I have to manufacture this phone, whether I want to manufacture a black phone or a, or a blue phone or a white phone, it was all dependent on based on the intuition of a person who's sitting in the production system itself or who's manufacturing and so on. There was very, very focus on less of the data itself, you know, taking decision based on their data. So Deming saw this then started saying that, guys, when you want to make any business decisions, let us see the data, let us see the facts and then take a decision and so on. This was said in 1940s. And in fact, you know what? Most of the time, still this this many organizations they don't take decision based on data itself they still try to take an intuition based decision making in fact uh, in the business world we often say that this is called as a hippo problem or a, a methodology is called as hippo h i p p o hippo model so uh, you know what does it hippo means is uh, basically you don't take decision based on data but you take this decisions based on a concept called as highest paid person's opinion you know it's a very intuitive one it says highest paid person's opinion when i say highest paid means a person who's in the top management if he decides everybody should follow it and that was the methodology or analogy that has been used time and now and so on so we started saying that okay because of this issue of this HIPAA problem, then the Deming started saying that, guys, let's take decision based on data. Let's not just take based on intuition. I know intuition is a great thing, but let's back it with the facts, data to make certain decisions and so on. That was the key idea behind um, uh, uh, idea behind uh, the concept of how data science got into picture and so on. So what is data science and what is AI is one thing which we need to understand. So one of the branches of artificial intelligence has been extracted from data science itself, guys. So that the reason why I'm saying this, because if we have to understand AI, let us try to understand what is data science and then take up one step at a time. So the first thing that I wanted to share is very commonly people ask me, you want to become a data scientist. Everybody comes and says that, can I become a data scientist and so on. So the first thing that you need to understand is what is data science? It is basically a skill of extracting knowledge from the data. Please remember the word is knowledge. If you're extracting only the information from the data, it is called as analytics. Whereas if you extract knowledge from the data, it becomes a data science. And from the knowledge, you try to predict the outcome and so on. That is the main reason of what is data science. Then within data science, there is a concept called as AI. From the data itself or from the knowledge, if you try to extract wisdom from the data, that is artificial intelligence. So guys, are you clear? If you are extracting knowledge from the data, it is data science. If you're extracting wisdom from the data, it becomes artificial intelligence. This is the beauty of the first definition. So when I had a chance to talk to Andrew Nick in uh, one of the Stanford professors, uh, when I was doing my research at Oxford, and then I had a chance to interact with him quite often. Andrew Nick is a very popular uh, uh, AI specialist. And he, he, he said this, that Safdar, if you try to extract wisdom, that is artificial intelligence. Echoing his word from the data, if you extract knowledge, it becomes a data science. And from that, if you extract wisdom, that becomes an artificial intelligence. This is the idea behind the definition of AI itself. And from this wisdom, we could act like a human being. You know, we are trying to perform like a human being and so on. So this is the kind of a definition that one has to understand. And, with, and why do you think that AI is getting very popular? You know, this is a very big question. The first thing, the reason for AI to get popular, I was seeing one of your uh, one of the the uh, presentations where Ta had sent a video which says that devices are getting connected and so on. 
So the first reason is that there are more and more devices are getting connected, guys. What it used to be 8.7 billion devices, now we are close to 50 billion devices by 2020. Imagine I'm sitting in Abu Dhabi, you people in Chikmangalore, we can still interact with the help of this on my laptop. There is a kind of uh, routers and you people are seeing on your mobile phone and so on. The reason for AI to become popular for the first reason is more and more devices are getting connected, which means that more and more data is getting connected. If you just open your own device itself, I could see your WhatsApp, I could see your pictures, I could see your videos that you have taken, you keep uploading on your Instagrams, Facebook, uh, Slacks and everything and so on. So that's first thing is that there's a lot of said about the devices that are being getting connected is phenomenal speed. Second one is the cost of storage itself is getting reduced day by day. If I have to tell you guys, in 1980s and 1990s, that is 88 and 89, if anybody had to buy one GB of data, you know, one GB of hard disk, one GB, just one GB, they had to pay one million dollars. Well, can you imagine, guys, the cost of one GB in 1987 was one million dollars. You know, uh, when um, we, we when when we when we wanted to learn computers and everything, I remember we used to have kilobyte, you know, floppy disk and everything and so on. I think must, some of you must be knowing this, but most of you might not be knowing. Uh, the the cost was almost like one million dollar to for one GB of data, and it was only with either with supercomputer in our uh, Reserve Bank of India in India, and there was second with uh, available with uh, uh, Reliance Group. These were the only two groups, and Syndicate Bank used to take rent from them to store the data and so on. You know, that was the first thing that I happened to see, the Canada Bank and Syndicate Bank and so on. So that was the thing. Now, if you start seeing it by 2020, what it used to cost $1 million is less than 10 paisa, not 1 GB, 10 paisa. For 10 GB hard disk, you have to pay a lot more than 10 rupees nowadays, guys. See, the cost of storage is also going down. This slide clearly says that, that what used to be in 1990s and everything, $1 million is less than 0.1 cent, just less than 0.1 cent, less than six rupees for one GB of data now. The third thing that becoming very, very differentiated is cost of computation itself. What used to take the number of million transit transistors to put it in the chip, which used to cost $222 in 1992. Now it is less than five cents right now. So the cost of processing is getting reduced day by day. So for these three reasons, more number of devices getting corrected. Second thing, the cost, storage cost is getting reduced. And third thing, the processing speed is getting increased. So if you have a, just like a Google account or Google Cloud or Amazon, you pay just $10, you get one GP of speed to process your data. So these are the three reasons for AI to get popular. If you see the first paper of AI was released in 1946, guys. What is artificial intelligence? You know what? That time, because the reason for failure of AI was for the simple reason that there was no, the cost of storage was very high. The, the speed of processing was very slow and there were not many people, devices that were generating data. Now we have all the three dimensions of generating more devices from the data. Second thing, the cost of storage is reducing so much. And third thing is the processing speed is increasing with a fraction of cost. This three reasons are resulting in popularity of artificial intelligence. So as I said, artificial intelligence is extracting wisdom from the data and data science is extracting knowledge from the data. If you can understand these two definitions, it becomes easier when you try to talk to industry people or academicians and everything and so on and so. So th this, with this kind, we are creating and storing more data at a very low cost. And that is the reason why it is getting very popular. So the next screen I wanted to share is how the world is changing with the power of AI itself. Guys, uh, uh, in the left side of the screen, you see a typical uh, kind of a stores where people are standing in the queue for a checkout counter, you know, back in US, whether it's a Walmart and everything and so on, they're waiting in the queue. And you know, in a retail business, 24% of the profitability comes on those items that are there near the checkout counters, the chewing gums, the chocolates, the magazines and everything and so on. So imagine I we had seen in San Francisco recently, there's a thing called Amazon Go. In Amazon Go, there is nothing called checkout, no lines. When you enter the Amazon, you just take the phone, you scan this and you keep putting the things into your cart and you just walk out. 
the from the video from the surveillance and every item you're putting it uh, the bill gets calculated and the moment you leave the counter the amazon shop itself you're charged on your credit card no standing in the queues itself so this is the kind of change that is happening the long waiting queues the weekend queues that we see in the, most of the countries in us and everything that is completely eliminated but what does it mean to the business your most profitable items which were on the on the checkout counter the chocolates and the batteries and the uh, and everything these will be impacted because the business will start seeing that the profitability of such items gets reduced and so on so things are changing drastically in the in this world second example that is very very common that i saw was on the left side you can see uh, two gentlemen two blind persons who are walking and with the help of a stick or a dog which is quite common in european countries and everything and so on now with the power of ai what we see is that we have put a cameras into your sun glasses itself you know, it's a camera and it is connected to your mobile and with just 100 dollars the camera talks to that person and tells in the brain saying that take a left it's as good as visualizing your entire 360 degrees this is the beauty of how the world is changing with the power of ai itself then there is something called as a google driverless cars amazing experience you just have to put okay from uh, 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 location a to location b you just enter sit there and the car takes you today in one of the simulation i will be explaining one simple simulation how does a, a driverless car works as a part of the demo itself not only that a machine learning and artificial intelligence have helped in creating creativity work like um, uh, many things like music now if you see this screen guys there are two sonnets sonnet one and sonnet two you know sonnet is nothing but a poem uh, do you think which sonnet is written by machine uh, in, uh, you know it's i hope it is if people can see the screen it's called a sonnet one and sonnet two you know uh, very often such kind of things could be written by shakespeare's and everything and so on nowadays both this sonnet one and sonnet two both are written by the machine itself with just by learning the way how shakespeare was thinking and so on this is how the world is changing we have seen how the it has helpful for the blind people the checkout counters that we see in the retail shop the driverless cars that is quite common nowadays it has seen lot of countries in back in abu dhabi also we have seen we have seen more creativity and the world is changing faster than the space itself what does it mean to us mckinsey expects mckinsey is a very known uh, consultancy company they expect that there is close to shortage of 250000 data scientists in us alone and nascom predicts that there is a 26% growth in analytics sector it need not be only for it or computer science it could be across the sectors if it's mechanical electrical constructions everything and so on with huge importance and domain have been given to the importance of artificial intelligence itself so this is a, just a quite common where all pwcs and all the big firms have started telling one of the big reasons i could see that only in the uh, that there is 7 trillion dollar market by 2021 on only on data analytics and so on so having said that there are a lot of terminologies being used in ai and so on you know quite common people get confused what is ai what is machine learning what is analytics and so on so i will take two three minutes just to explain to you different definitions of of uh, uh, data science concepts and definitions for about five minutes and you will understand what does it mean right so i'll try to draw a, a, a new slide i'll just pick it up guys let's i'll show to you how does it work on the x-axis i'll try to this is called a spectrum of ai and data science so the first thing that one has to understand is in any spectrum on the x-axis there's a value added to the organization and in the y-axis is the complexity supposedly if you're trying to check what has happened in the past you know you're trying to see how much was the sales what was the number of enrollment in the students historical data and so on we often call that as descriptive analytics what has happened in the past this is called as descriptive analytics second thing we do is what is currently going on with which is called as mi mis management information system or a dashboard so first thing is what descriptive analytics what has happened in the past that kind of data science is called as descriptive analytics 
what is currently going on we call it as mis or dashboard the third thing what is why did this happen such kind of data science is called as inferential analytics this is very common called as hypothesis testing and everything and so on then you have the next high level that is the called as what could happen in the future it's called as predictive analytics which is also based on machine learning and lastly the highest level what should happen in the future is your artificial intelligence so please remember guys when you are talking don't get confused what has happened in the past is called descriptive analytics what is currently going on is called as mis or dashboard why did that happen such kind of analytics is called as inferential analytics what could happen is predictive analytics and what should happen is artificial intelligence so descriptive analytics could be saying that in each of the regions what was the sales what was the rejection what is the quality and so on mis dashboard would look like which is what is currently going on where what are the things happening and inferential analytics is why did the sales in mumbai region or bombay region or in uh, or in bangalore region went down that is called as inferential analytics fourth element is predictive analytics how much sales could happen in the future is predictive analytics and ai what should happen in the future is artificial intelligence so the difference between predictive and ai is simple that in 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 data science we would have said suppose you are doing a driverless car and you see a green light and what does it do you predictive analytics says that please take the car forward you know that is what the driverless car would have said supposedly if a person is crossing the road the, the signal is green light what does it mean does it mean that you need to stop the stopping is nothing but artificial intelligence that is your wisdom you're using your wisdom not if you had used only your data science power you would have gone and hit the person who is crossing the road just because the the signal was green light if the signal was green light and if a person was crossing on a zebra crossing or moving somewhere or a dog is moving or something like that stopping the car is ai that is the wisdom extracting the wisdom from the data is artificial intelligence guys so this is a typical spectrum of what data science and ai is please remember that these are the things that one has been going uh, at these terminologies so that it could be helpful when you talk to your counterparts with your future uh, industrialist or something like that there are five what has happened in the past is called descriptive analytics what is currently going on is called as mis or dashboard why did it happen inferential analytics what could happen is predictive analytics and what should happen is artificial intelligence if you have remember these things that means that you have got a fair idea about what exactly means the spectrum of data science and what terminology is to be used and so on so there are various applications of data science so one of the most common to the youth is the you know, amazon you know amazon website and so on guys uh, i'll share with you this screen very interesting screen on there are two people who have logged into amazon.in probably for example uh, uh, myself and mohammed taha for example the left screen is of uh, taha who has tried to log in his on his computer and if you notice on the left hand side you see that all he, for him only the mobile phones comes and for me on the right hand side you see a lot of watches guys why why is that you know in spite of having both of us logging amazon.in same portal same way i haven't we have both signed in as well but still on the left hand side you see there is a mobile phones displays whereas for me it is only the watches what it has done us in the past based on your cookies amazon.in has seen your profile of how what you were searching a person who is searching for mobile phones or a person who is searching for other items these are the things that he has understood with the help of cookies and presenting within the short span what is the most likely product the customer is interested to buy this is the power of application of data science itself this is called as a recommender system where you recommend what product is more appropriate for a given customer because the size space of a, a, 
of the web page is so restricted and there are 20 million products you can't display all of them you display what is the most likability of a person would buy it so for me it may be the watches that is coming on the right side for the other person maybe the telephone for the mobile phones if is is searching more on the mobile phones this is a kind of an artificial intelligence like for example we are intelligently thinking that what could be the most likely product a customer could buy so this is a, a kind of applications. There are several, several applications of data science. It is used in Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. You name everywhere it is used. Uh, you, 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 it is very, very popular in our industry, in banking sectors. How do you make a decision whether to give a customer a credit card or a loan and so on? Very popular application data science. Uh, it is used in fraud detection, anti-money laundering and so on. Uh, apart from that, a lot of e-commerce companies they use, like Amazon, Flipkart, uh, Snap, very, very, they understand the make use of power of AI and data science in their decision making. Google uses it, you know, while before the typing itself, it tries to search and give you what is the most likely words that you would be searching. Guys, this one short screen sheet I wanted to share to tell you that application of data science and AI is across various domains not necessary only in e-commerce it could be used in social media it is very popular in banking using credit score e-commerce discount optimization search engines insurance sports industry uh, we all love cricket right we love cricket imagine and his appeal for leg before wicket and you know what the umpire says that no it's not up uh, when the ball was moving away from the wickets and so on then the what does the baller do is he goes and asks for a review in the cricket itself so what happens in the cricket the you see that they they do a checklist of three dots you know if the ball is pitched in line or just outside the off stump it is hitting the wickets or and there are three dots that they say and what does it means is it's nothing but the application of artificial intelligence guys you have seen thousands of balls of that pace that bounce that type of swing if it had gone what is the probability with 90 percent that it's going to hit the wicket is nothing but predictive analytics itself so you got the interesting part it's very very popular in cricket very popular in cricket itself saying that if a ball pitches and you know third umpire takes he goes up for a call and you see that all the three dots are saying answer yes it's out and the decision is there that is the beauty of artificial intelligence it has learned all kinds of balls that were pitched and what was which at which angle it went and hit the that wicket itself this is nothing but your artificial intelligence guys you are intelligently assigning understanding the speed of the ball the pitch of the ball that the the angle of the ball and then you're taking a predictive decision and this is nothing but application of artificial intelligence especially in cricket like that it is it is used across globally it is used very popular in healthcare also by just looking at the iris scan one could predict at the age of five whether the boy or a girl would be having a diabetic or not guys since you people are coming from manufacturing industry one of the biggest challenge in automobiles is the demand forecasting of the parts itself the data science and ai has helped tremendously to reduce the cost by understanding what could be the forecast itself manufacturing asset maintenance predictive and uh, maintenance when i was working with ge in appliances in louisville kentucky the first thing was we were predicting when would the machine would need a maintenance itself so we uh, at one of the case studies that we did was uh, the braking la landing pads that were there uh, of, of an aircraft engine the way it made the sound made us to predict whether they required a maintenance or a replacement or so on that is the power of uh, ai itself it is used in telecoms restaurants real estate medical electronics retail airlines transportation education farming defense you name it you have it the application of ai across the world and so on so uh, last two three slides on the some information then after that it will be a, a fun loving exercise that i wanted to do so always remember there are three types of data that one has to understand one is called as a structured data that is coming from your oracle database queries a typical crm and so on there is very popularly third second type of data set it's called as unstructured data that is your twitter data voice data and so on which is which we make sense from this data itself 
for example if there was <clears throat> a description of a like a mazda car is a short list compact car uh, as a hatchback sedan and so on so it tries to extract some information from that and third thing is called as a semi structured data this is a combination of both structure which has a schema and a non schema like it could be your emails and everything and so on so these are the three different types of data that you across your your iot data and so so these are the few overview of complete data uh, and artificial intelligence so as i said to you guys two things that you need to understand if you are extracting knowledge from the data it becomes data science if you're extracting wisdom from the data it becomes artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence is the highest level within the spectrum of data science because it could predict or it could find out what should happen rather than what could happen and so on what has happened in the past is descriptive what is currently going on is your mis or your dashboard what why did it happen is the inferential analytics what is what could happen is predictive analytics and what should happen is nothing but your artificial intelligence itself so this is the key this few definitions that i wanted to clarify before driving in and showing you some real use cases that i wanted to share with you and try to show a demo of that one so give me i'll take a one minute two minutes of a short question is if there is anything that you want to ask or anything and so on and then uh, after that i'll try to show you a demo i'll explain you one problem statement for a driverless car and we all all of us will do, i'll show you the code of how do you do a driverless car simulation which will do practically because you are people are mtech students uh, sorry uh, mechanical students which will help you to understand a little bit about what is driverless cars and how does the concept of driverless car is and second thing i would show my second use case is specifically use yes it's a programming language used in ai it's a, it's python programming that i'll be showing uh, guys so that's the thing but before that any questions anything that you wanted to ask or you want to chat i'll take a minute of pause before showing you the use case of the problem statement of what we are trying to achieve in one of the use cases now chandra the programming languages used in ai is the most popular one is the python programming right now chandra Uh, what is ANN? Uh, it is called as artificial neural networks. It is a, uh, it is extracting wisdom from the data itself. You know, if you're extracting knowledge, it becomes data science. So within that itself, we try to extract using a machine learning kind of a concept, which is an extension called as ANN, artificial neural network, which thinks like a brain and so on. A relational database is basically your traditional Oracle database and so on, which has the queries and everything and so on. It has a rows and columns. It is like a typical Excel sheet, uh, which has uh, uh, like name of a person, age, salary and everything. And those records and something, for example, uh, employee number, employee number, number, age, name, uh, salary, this, if it is like this, 34 name, HUL, uh, Shri, uh, salary is 10,000. Just give it, this is a relational database. So this is called as structured data. So you have a proper structure, you have variables and, and so on. If I had a text data, hello, how are you? How are you doing or something? This is called as unstructured data. And third thing is a semi-structured data and so on. Uh, there are uh, maybe I'll take one at a time. AN is training of AI to mimic like a human brain. Yes, Chandan, it is very similar to it. Uh, so we can start making use of it uh, like a brain which thinks. I'll show you, okay? I'll, in one of the demos, you will try to see how I'm mimicking a, a human brain to tell the emotions of a person and so on. So, Chandan, I'll be getting uh, Taha. Can we achieve AI as well as Telsa car and surrounding of the car, for example, controlling? Term? Yes, we can do it. I'll try to show you uh, in one of the examples now. Chandro, I think the SkyPy is just a package that has been used to do some of your machine learning and AI melding models and so on. Uh, Darshini, some examples of AI used in aeronautical field. Uh, Darshini, uh, I, let me explain to you. In aeronautics, 
one of the biggest challenge when I was with the GE uh, aircrafts and in Cincinnati, Darshini, we saw that there are something called braking pads. You know, when, when the flight is landing, there are braking pads. To do a maintenance of those braking pads, you need to keep the plane for one day at the workshop itself. You know, you need to keep it at the workshop where you cannot do anything such like, and one day of revenue losing the plane is so much high just for something called as predictive maintenance. You're trying to maintain replace and so on. So what we did is we cannot keep one day plane ideal standing in the in a GE aircraft engine. So what we did is we started keeping a voice recorder at the time of landing itself. So we started listening to the noise that was landing itself. So this is a part of AI. This voice recording, we went ahead and when we opened the, the gear, the, so the landing itself, we saw that whether the maintenance required or not. So we, we learned based on AI saying that what type of noise will result in maintenance of it without opening the, the complete component itself at the time of landing itself. So that was the beauty of how AI was used in aeronautics. Now by just listening to the noise of the way plane has landed, we could go back and say that, guys, this is a replaceable part which should be replaced or not. So it was a very, very popular one. Uh, it's been done because we, GE as a company, we were competing against Rolls Royce. We were competing against Honeywell and so on. So that was the reason why we started using it. So uh, that, that is the use of aeronautics. Skype, uh, you can always Google it, Chandra. There's a lot of there available. Uh, I'm a bit, sir, can I know about supervised learning? Uh, Anant, it's a very nice thing. Uh, what supervised learning is basically, you know something has happened in the past. For example, uh, Anant, you have seen a customer who has taken a loan, has not repaid the loan. I know that this customer is defaulted. In banking term, we call it a default. But some customers have paid the loan. So we have the data. That data, the last element, whether you have defaulted or not defaulted, is called as target variable. Now, I build a model which tries to learn for what features, whether the person will default or not. So we often call it a credit score and everything and so on. Now, what we do is now a new application comes we learn based on AI model, which says that based on his history, based on transactions and everything, whether should I give a loan or not. This learning is called as a supervised learning. So uh, that, that is the thing and so on. Uh, Sanjay is asking, uh, is there a college degree with specialization in AI, AI ML? Oh, I love it, so Sanjay. I did my uh, MTech from Indian Institute of Technology in Hyderabad in data science and AI itself. Uh, fantastic college, IIT, uh, if you had a chance, Sanjay, please get into it, take your gate exams, and hopefully that will be there. That was a practical way of learning that and so on. Chandan, uh, we can take it a little offline on Skype, I'll share my email idea. Chandru uh, and linear algebra, these are the, some of the prerequisites. I'll share an email to Taha about how do you become a data scientist with free of charge, and how do you become AI scientist? It's a complete tutorial, free of charge. You don't have to pay a single paisa, single zero cost to you. And you people can read that email, which I have explained to you what is needed to learn from a statistics, what is learned to be learned on a probability, what is to be learned in calculus from a data science perspective, Python programming, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and artificial intelligence. Complete chain of emails, I'll share it with you. I request Taha, uh, once I send that email, Please share it with all the fellow mates who are there who could see that what is to be studied to become a data scientist in the field of artificial intelligence and so on. I'll share that email with you guys. So that is a quick overview. Now let's go and come to the practical sense, guys. It's, you know, practical doing hands on. You guys are technology, you know, auto, uh, MT, uh, I mean, uh, mechanical guys, you know, always you need to do something of your love and everything. So I'll explain to you one problem statement now, guys, and I'll try to explain how do we solve that problem. So the first use case that I wanted to show with you is called as uh, any comments, guys. Yeah. Okay. Taha, okay, fine. All, all, all of all the students could be shared. Okay, no issues at all. Uh, Yes, Tejaswini, we can use AI to use improved defense equipment. There is no need to put a human being at the borders at all. In UAE, there are only robots who protect the borders. There are no human beings who protect. Uh, this is one of the most popular one, uh, Tejaswini. Uh, it's a very popular use case study in UAE. There at the borders, they have put robots where there are no people standing and protecting the borders. It is through machine learning and AI that we have used. Excuse me, it sir. can be done. Yes. Sir, yes, don't you think that uh, 
if we introduce ai it might be uh, means in some sector there might be a loss of employment so do we uh, really harsh, need the ai uh, you know harsh you know what there is a there is always a deta debatable harsh this question you know you, some says that uh, do we need it no this was the question in 1910 also when it was asked when there were ho horses that were carrying people in transportation harsh and uh, when uh, henry ford wanted to invent a car everybody started questioning do we need car that time are you taking away the employment of the horses the carriage and people same thing when computers was introduced they were asking whether the typing uh, typing's job would go off and so on harsh now we have to think from a long term perspective if i tell you harsh i can predict whether a person is having a diabetes at the age of 5 it is such a popular thing not at the age of 50 when he becomes 50 and then it is if he could identify it well in advance that he should stop consuming uh, uh, this level of sugar this is kind of a thing it's a kind of a, a thing it has both pros and cons harsh to be honest with you uh, so using them effectively for the welfare of the people it's always good and but if you come and say that harsh i'm going to use ai to uh, to uh, rob your banking accounts to to do a kind of a cyber threat i'll i'll withdraw the cash from reserve bank something like that so this is an ai threat that then that is misuse of it so if you use it in effectively it is a positive way more and more jobs are getting created i showed you 26% there will be increase in this specific ai domain itself guys the one area that would have a job in spite of all the situation is is in the field of ai itself if you combine your domain technology knowledge of mechanical with ai nothing like that so i hope that answers you harsh so it is debatable but just give me one time so that i could start showing you one driverless car uh, you know about about 70 to 80% people in india still depend on autos and everything and so on in spite of having everything so if i could give them a kind of a small car which they can decide where to go from where it creates a kind of independentability and so on uh, debatable but i'll show you what is what i'm trying to say so the first use case that i'm trying to sh share with you guys it's called as driverless car you know always remember driverless car is nothing but a car in which a car has to understand the road and drive accordingly and so on so there are three elements that one has to understand in this simulation before showing you the code i'll explain you the concepts uh, the three things that you need to do is first is you need to have a car that is to be designed to understand the roads itself second thing that you need is a map map is basically your geolocation areas and everything and so on and third thing is called as the brain brain is nothing but ai to take a decision whether which area to go and so on so i have a problem which i'm trying to solve a simple problem this supposedly this is uh, no no fill i'll try to no fill uh, suppose this is a map right uh, i'm trying to make it very simple uh, i have a kind of a, this is my airport and uh, this is my house and there is a, a road that goes between uh, uh, something like this i'm i'm doing very simple guys easy way but it it means that there are a lot of uh, hercules and everything and so on and this is all uh, uh, like a kind of a, this is this is the only the black road that this is the road and this is the thing so i have a small car which tries to learn going from this location to this location and this is all road uh, muds and everything if a car goes here that means it has to learn so the driverless car is basically we use a concept of artificial intelligence in such a way that that if a car goes in the correct direction you reward the car and if it goes in the any other direction of not in the path you you pen penalize the car and for the car we put three sensors here guys uh this is sensor 1 sensor 2 sensor 3 uh which tries to read the the front the side left side and right side of the car in knowing where the car should go these are the sensors okay from these sensors 
you try to learn to go from your home to this office or airport or so on and this car so i'll show you the code can you see my screen guys uh Taha or anyone can say yes or yes no? sir yes sir we can see okay the for the first thing that i'll probably i'll try to show one more uh basically uh the design of the car itself guys i will open this with uh, a uh, notepad, uh, uh, the design of the car itself. I have used an application called Kiwi application. Uh, somebody were asking me, who was that? I am not sure. Let me see the chat. The programming language is Python that I have been using to design the car, a very small car. It's a simulation. Uh, it is a car which has in three things. It has a rotation at rectangle and pop matrix which i'm giving and it has three sensors called ball one ball two ball three three sensors and it tries to read those sensors and tries to move and so on this is my car design and this is my python this which i have given a kind of a, uh, the environment yeah, which i have created uh, sorry can you mute it guys a little bit poorly Thank you. Uh, so this is basically the map itself, the which I showed you guys. This is the map which says that this is the entry, this is the home, this is the airport, and this is the car. This this is very very important. I have given a small simulation which tries to use. I've used the Kiwi packages to develop this code. I've used uh, a kind of a last point entry, exit point entry, and so on. And this is my brain of the computer, which is the AI brain. I use deep uh, neural nets and I'm whenever there is a, a trank or anything I'm moving at a my 20 degrees at a positive right side zero means I'm not going to move I'm going to move front if it is plus 20 I'm going to move it right if it is minus 20 I'm going to take minus 20 and so on so the I initially globally set those variables uh, I give the proper velocity and the sensors of the car and I try to move the car uh, with this one so this code is basically your entire environmental setup code and uh, the next code is your artificial intelligence. This is my AI brain that I have done. I have used PyTorch. Uh, it's a very popular uh, uh, packages within, uh, 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 within the Python programming. I initialize it. And based on that, I try to run this code. And let me see what does it work. First, I'll try to run my brain to simulate and store those findings and so on. Uh, I'm using a, a package uh, called as Anaconda IDE. I'll try to run this one, guys. It's trying to run. Okay, multinomial is not working right now. So in the AI package, uh, this is okay. Probably I'll just pick up a different code I have done. Uh, probably, yeah. Just give me one minute, guys. I'll set the directory as well. Sorry, just showing you. I run this one. The first, the brain, I'm trying to run the brain, which tries to learn and understand what are the move directions that one has to take. Uh, you know, everything looks clear. Uh, let me pull up the map and start. run the looks like uh, there's a missing element over here uh if i put that the time six, 63 line number multinomial okay uh, let me restart the terminal So I'm trying to run the simulation, which tries to learn artificial intelligently uh, what needs to be done and try to identify the kind of a thing. If not, I'll go to the next example, guys. Give me one minute. If not, I'll try to go ahead with the other one.
See guys, this is the car. Can you see the screen guys, all of you? It has trying to learn now. The car has started learning. It is going from home. Uh, whenever, see the senses it has going, whenever it hits, it, it is learning on its own. So this is your driverless car. It is trying to learn from a various environment and whenever it tries to hit the end mark, it is, it is turning on its own. This is the beauty of artificial intelligence. This is the smallest simulation that has shown. This is the car. If you see the, the, the red, yellow, and are the signals generation, and you see how the car is learning in any environment between going from location A to location B within the path that we have defined and so on. So this is one of the implementation of artificial intelligence, which I wanted to simulate and show it to you. A simple line of code, I've written not more than 200 lines of code, where this simulation is all about identifying the senses identifying your to location and the from location and car is driving on its own without any intervention or so on. So imagine that you people, you, your, your college students with a combination of computer science, electronics, mechanical engineers and everything can think of creating something of your own in your own college campus to move either from your hostel to your college and so on. This is what we tried in IIT campus. It worked very well. So we have a small the vehicle which carries uh, coffee and tea between the canteen to the room. Uh, it was a beautiful exercise that we happened to do in a long time back at IIT. Uh, I hope this is some kind of intuition to you. Uh, anybody needs a source code and anything, I'm happy to provide. Uh, this is how the, uh, through the power of AI, it has started to learn. Guys, is it clear? Any questions? This is, uh, uh, yes, Taha, it is spider. Uh, the code is in GitHub, uh, Chandan. I'll share the link and everything with you. You can make use of it. Try to use that gives you kind of a thought process and simulation to you to start thinking and so on. Uh, this is with respect to mechanical. One one second use case I wanted to share is a very very close to my heart, which I implemented uh, very very uh, recently in this part of the world. Uh, it is called as emotional analytics. I'll go back and show you the screen, guys. Uh, uh, I don't know whether you have seen my YouTube videos and everything and so on. Now, in any business world, customer emotions becomes very important, guys. You know, the way they interact, the way we see and so on. So one of the business entity had come and asked us, uh, Safdar, we have a, a big mobile shop. When a customer comes, he's seeing the mobile. Uh, he's just seeing the mobile and he's not purchasing the mobile. He's going online and he's buying the mobile, but he comes only to my store to see the features of a mobile. Have you done this thing, guys? You have gone to walked into a showroom, seen all the features of a mobile, uh, seen the camera, seen the video and everything and so on, but you went and ordered it online. Oh yeah, Taha says yes, Taha. So this is quite common, you know, this is, was a business problem, you know. Uh, Ravi is also saying yes. Uh, Ravi, this is so common to all of us, not just mobile. This was so this company, which was having this retail shop, they pay for the rent and everything and so on. They were a little bit worried that how should I give my customer happiness? You know, how should I understand my customer emotions before even the customer leaves my shops? Can I target him? Can I give him more? So when we did a customer survey and feedback, they said that, sir, when I'm trying to see the mobile phone. Uh, this is very popular. It has been implemented in one of the big bazaars and everything in Bangalore and everything and so on. Sir, when I'm seeing the mobile phone, none of the, the customer service people will come and talk to me. They just come at the, at the time of going and so on. So, so we started seeing that, guys, there is a problem with that. We are not understanding our customers. We are not able to understand emotions of a customer itself and so on. So what we did is we came up with a concept called as emotional analytics using artificial intelligence emotional analytics means when a customer comes to the shop when he or she is seeing the mobile phone and seeing the features and everything and so on and before leaving we try to see the customer's emotions whether the customer was happy unhappy sad and if he's unhappy immediately before the customer leaves the retail shop a service agent would come to identify that this customer needs an attention you try to address it this is, was the business problem we were trying to solve. So understanding the customer emotions with the power of artificial intelligence. So I'll try to give a short demo guys of this particular application, which tries to see the face of the customer and based on the face of the customer, it directs 
the service agent or the sales agent to tell which customer needs to be focused and so on. So let me go back and uh, I had prepared the code also with this. Let me go there. I'm going to run this uh, application. It's called as Emotional Analytics using Artificial Intelligence. Uh, can you see my screen, guys? I'm running a TensorFlow Python package. And uh, and in the video, it just tries to see me itself, the way I'm sitting, you know? And I'll give you 60 seconds for the computer to understand my features. And based on that, it takes tries to take you or take a decision whether I was a happy customer, unhappy customers, or an angry customer, or need some attention and so on. So probably it's running. Uh, uh, it's it's a CPU application that I have generated. Sir, is it based on image processing? Image processing, exactly, ma. It's based on image processing itself. I have used a CV to open CV in, in this application. So just try to see this, uh, guys. So let's see. Oh, it looks like it's not seeing my face because I'm showing, uh, sharing my video. One minute, guys. Yeah. It's not showing. One. Minute. Probably I need to stop showing my face here. Uh, stop. Uh, Oh, Taha looks like there is a problem in this one. Uh, no issue, sir. Maybe you can uh, uh, send a link. I'll send you the link. Of the, yeah, I have a video of that link. Probably I'll send it. The send the link. I'm sorry, guys. At the last minute, I don't know. There are two cameras that are contesting to. One is over here and one. So what it did, guys, is like based on the fact of emotions itself, it started to uh, identify and so on. Probably give me a minute. I'll try once again. Just give me one minute, guys. Not more than that. Just hold one. Uh, probably I'll sh sh share in the chat itself, guys, uh, uh, the YouTube link, which you can see what I was trying to give a demo. Unfortunately, it is not there. But I'll just show you the gist of that one. This is my YouTube video where I, I presented this at the World Economic Forum. See, this is, was the idea behind it. I'll just show you. Try to see the screen and let me know. I was giving it different emotions at that time. So it processed it and it gave you a kind of emotion. Oh, we can't see your sc screen, sir. Sir, exactly how much of images or the data have you used in this uh, image processing, sir? 3,000 up player, 3,000, 3,000 uh, learning system. We had 3,000 images from the uh, itself. Sorry, who asked this question? Anshu, Harsh, yeah? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, Harsh, I used a training data set of 300 customers, 3,000 customers of Big Bazaar who had come to the mobile shop to see what are the features of that customer itself. So with the help of that, uh, we, we understood and the training was done based on that, uh, Harsh. And then the learning happened on those 3,000 images and the model was built up based on that. Of course, uh, 
this model doesn't work in everywhere we have to learn uh, for example i we were get, i was giving a presentation in korea and samsung and then uh, i had to literally stop this one because the face of a korean is different from the face of an indian so you need to be a uh, learning of that particular perspective so learning data set becomes extremely important uh, so we require a lot more means many lot, more of data email yes the more the data better but it was for 3000 applications that were there uh, can you see the screen guys now uh, taha harsh anyone yes sir we can see so this uh, is the youtube one, video guys yeah uh, one uh, small interruption uh, sorry uh, i request all the student participants to fill out the uh, feedback form given in the chat box uh, we can issue certificates based on the on the feedback thank you you can continue sir so no problem thanks sir so i'll just share with you this is the uh, video can you hear this see the videos or something yeah, uh, yes sir we can see so it is trying to learn the person's face and tries to uh, process it and tries to give a kind of a how much percentage that i was anger i was neutral and so on can you hear me guys yes yes we can uh the audio from the video is uh, not available okay okay i'll say, share the link on the video youtube uh, guys it oh, gives sure, a, sir, a no kind problem of a, a kind of a demonstration to you people to say exactly what the customer was feeling guys you know this was uh, uh the kind of a, a idea or behind it so uh this is what i wanted to share and cover a little bit about uh, uh about what is artificial intelligence one of the two life cases that i wanted to share was one was on the uh, driverless car which was uh, quite popular in uh, this part of the world as well as other world and uh, and uh, with few of the emotions that we wanted to understand called as emotional analytics where the machine was able to understand the human emotions and then try to predict whether the customer was angry or unhappy and how could we address that customer on the fly itself before he leaves the retail shop and before he leaves the retail shop how could we capture that as a customer for the future business so with this i conclude uh, my session uh, guys i sorry i took about 5 to 6 minutes of extra than what has been said uh, feel free to reach me i have my email address over here i have my ua and whatsapp number uh, india number as well so it's usain.pmp@gmail.com anybody who's interested to learn more about data science and artificial intelligence free of charge guys there's no catch for me uh, free of charge happy to share the emails and everything and so on uh, love to hear from you sorry uh, this was a kind of a quick uh, just for you people to to give you a kind of a interest in the field of artificial intelligence as you as a students can do a wonderful things right from not just the descriptive analytics or uh, uh, inferential analytics or predictive analytics but also the ai part itself ah, please and i wish you all the best may god bless you with all success uh, special thanks to each one of you uh, respected principal respected head of the department teachers faculty senior faculty members industrialist and my lovely students and friends uh, thank you once again for this hearing out to me uh, so i appreciate it and i'm happy to take questions as well excuse me sir y yes ma sir wh while conducting the customer survey was there any customer with a poker face sir means who was not showing any emotion yes there were emotions also so we got three emotions harsh one was a uh, customers with neutral emotions neutral means just like a normal face harsh second customer second of customers were were kind of a happy customer at least 60% of the time they smiled you know looking at a mobile and so on and we got another set of customers who were a little bit angry you know you see with your forehead looking eyes and everything and so on and we were able to manually label them for 3000 customers uh, harsh 3000 customers with close to 60 seconds close to roughly around if i'm not wrong roughly around 70000s of images were captured based on the training data set harsh uh, this one. sure uh, so let me take up this one by one guys uh, uh, yes so there's a tech form that you have said retail bargaining including faculty kindly share your email we will provide a very nice specific thank you guys uh, so what going to happen if ai has started to understand all the emotions of human beings 
what's going to happen guys is um, uh, it's, it's a good question anant uh, uh, you know ai has started to understand emotions for human being also uh, one thing is like uh, you won't be having that personal touch so i have been telling that uh, it is not uh, anant uh, it's not man versus machine it's man with machine that makes life easier to all of us you know it's not the competition of ai versus a human it's ai with human makes life easier and simple i'm not telling that you can always rely on ai ai can be deceptive i'll be giving you an example uh, anand uh, in back in san francisco in 2017 even in a driverless car a lady was been crushed and hit by the driverless car for the simple reason that the dress she was wearing and the dress of the road which she was there was almost the same computer couldn't identify the difference between the dress the way, the dress she was wearing and the the color of the road you know then it went and crashed into it so be careful guys <coughs> we should have ethical concept so still a human being is needed so i'm just telling ai with human makes lot of sense rather than just ai or just human so i hope that answers uh, anand so that's my take on that so sahana what are the challenges limiting to the adoption of ai in construction industry sahana very good question now typically in construction industry is coming from past 100 years you know construction is happening every now and then and the people who are sitting in the management of construction board are always thinking from a, a profitability perspective you know uh, how much money i should make how much money i should make and so on they are very limited to innovations and so on now if i say that if i could use a drone to carry multiple things from one location to another location or to check the quality of a person work and so on we could use this ai in the construction industry the key challenge is is the mindset of management itself if your management thinks that no i'm not going to invest money in ai in the construction industry how good it may be we will not be able to adopt to it the biggest challenge in construction industry currently sahana is the mindset of a management or a senior management in adaptation towards ai artificial intelligence they still feel that ai is good for a e-commerce company ai is good for a medical ai is used for good for healthcare ai is used for transportation but not for construction this is the big challenge that we often see i hope it answers mohammad yasir beg uh, is indian technology equipped and compatible run parallel with ai yes it's coming up uh, yasir uh, there is uh, i have seen literally in at infosys in mysore office uh, there is a, a ai tech park it is it's called as ai center of excellence i have seen in tcs also they have come up with their own ai so a lot of major companies have started adopting it also if you walk into koramangala 6th uh, block uh, there are about 6 to 7 companies all are ai companies Uh, you'll be amazed to know that way the indian uh, technology is equipped to compatible to run with parallel with ai i i'm sure uh, we are big learners indians as whole uh, we learn fast quick fast and follow fast so i i i think india is coming up to that space and so on go in the thanks a lot college for conducting this what is the okay tejaswini i have given you the limitation of indian defense using ai uh, tejaswini i'll be very uh, i'm a very optimistic person uh, indian defense have started using ai i'll be honest with you we are start talking the the the, the the government has started investing a lot uh, his uh, the, uh, the uh, dr ravi shankar uh, prasad he himself was talking to one of the conferences where they he said the importance of artificial intelligence let's not uh, discount that uh, challenging times are there it's just a priority that now covid situation has come uh, there are other situation economy is going up but there is Uh, coming up in the field of uh, defense as well using ai uh, my own brother in law my wife's brother he works in army he is he is a major general uh, uh, colonel in the army and the kind of learning that they are going through is phenomenal i completely support it and uh, uh, there are limiting limitations no doubt about it but tejaswini uh, it's going to upcoming we are going to uh, we are going to see this in the coming future chandru wants to know about pandas pandas it's a very good package uh, pandas chandru it is very similar to use as a arrays uh, or uh, for example it is uh, 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 if you if you have learned a linear algebra kind of thing which says that uh, vectors and the matrix multiplications and all the calculations pandas can do it in a few fraction of a second a great package you can always use it and it goes on what is meant by ai neural networks 
uh, neural networks is like in a brain, uh, we have something called as synapses that connects between the hidden and new uh, layer, uh, which connects it. Uh, if you want, I can give a quick demo. I'm not sure how much the time permits. Uh, if let me see if I can give you playground or tensor. Uh, let me show present my entire screen. Uh, Tejaswini, uh, this is this is sorry, Chandru. This is for you. This is called as artificial neural network. I was trying to use uh, uh, three hidden layers, four neurons, uh, trying to understand. These are your good customers, uh, which are embedded outside. Are your good customers and inside your bad customers? How do you differentiate? I'll run the epoch one over here. It's a very easy. Uh, tan, uh, uh, relu would be the activation function. I don't want any regularization. This is how the learning has happened. Just imagine within a fraction of seconds with three hidden layers, you have started to learn. This is nothing but your artificial neural net of identifying good versus bad in a retail business case. This is your epoch and so on. Uh, I hope that answers your questions, uh, Chandro, of how, what is meant by AI neural network. Using like a brain to detect what is the best input for the best output is what AI neural network means, which you can see in this paper. Uh, so, Chandan, we said training AI to mimic human nervous systems. Yes, Chandan, you have said it in a more best technical way. Uh, yes, I think I've answered all the questions, Taha. These were the few questions I had could see in the chat bot. And uh, great to see you, great to hear and ask these things, guys.